If there was a list of best phones ever made, I would hope that the Nexus 6 was on that list. I know the Galaxy Nexus would not be, though it would be on my list, but there is no doubt that this theoretical list for best phones ever made would have the OnePlus 7 Pro on that list. That being said, after four years, I think it's finally time to retire this phone. At least, that's what I thought before this video. Hello everyone, this is Matt from Real Worlds of View, and today I'm making my last OnePlus 7 Pro video, with one caveat. So let me tell you what it's like using this phone in 2023, and what I plan to do with it. Here's a brief overview of the specs, which you should know by now. Snapdragon 855 chip, 6, 8, or 12 gigabytes of RAM, and 128 or 256 gigabytes of UFS 3.0 storage, this one being the 12 slash 256 gigabyte dual SIM kit. This does run Android 12, which is the last official software it will get, with December 2022 being the last security patch. At least, that's what it seems like. There are some things that ruin this, like how the hidden space is now password protected. I just wanted to hide the apps that I don't use too much, not put them behind a password. But Android 12 forces this, or more of Oxygen OS. Powering this phone, we get a 4000 milliamp cell, which is showing its age. We do get 30 watts of warp charging on official chargers, but no wireless charging. For me, this battery feels like it needs to be replaced after 4 years of usage, but it still lasts a pretty decent amount of time. Of course, the main thing killing this battery is that gorgeous screen. It is a 6.67 inch 1440p OLED panel with a 90Hz refresh rate, something that was revolutionary at launch and somewhat underpowered in 2023. But there's no screen intrusions, no hole punches or anything like that, and that's what makes this phone so iconic. It is a curved panel with Gorilla Glass 5 on the top, pixel density of 516 pixels per inch, and a screen brightness of about 450 nits. We not only don't get a hole punch or notch for the front camera, but we also get this optical fingerprint scanner that's under the screen and kind of hit or miss. I do have a screen protector on it, so maybe that kind of affects it, but still, not the best. And with all of that, that's why I rely on face unlock. Now we can talk about the frame starting with the top of the phone, which is where the microphone and the pop-up camera live. After four years, nope, my camera still works fine. There are some scratches, but it works perfectly. The left side is where the volume buttons are, while the right side is where the power button and the almighty alert slider is, allowing you to go from ring to vibrate to mute, all without even looking at your phone. It's the little things. Then on the bottom, there's two microphones, a dual or single SIM tray depending on which one you buy, a loudspeaker which pairs with the top earpiece to give you a quality stereo setup, and the USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 port, or 5 gigabits per second USB-C port. This frame is a two-tone aluminum going all the way around the phone, while the back is a slab of curved Gorilla Glass 5. This is where the camera assembly, flash, and OnePlus branding is. Some people love it, and some people hate it, but I'm one of those that loves the design of this phone. The frosted back, the pop-up front camera, the well-rounded but also fair heft to this device being 206 grams makes this phone a classic. That being said, it's a pretty tall phone. But of course there are some extras, but also we gotta talk about how this phone works today with those specs. The vibrating mechanism in this phone is actually pretty good and gives a nice feel, not going crazy when a phone call comes in. This is not a 5G phone, and realistically you'd want to go with the 7T Pro 5G if you did need a pop-up camera with 5G. Now for using the phone, you know how the battery works, but the processor is technically old. We're talking about Samsung S10e old, and in turn, the performance in this phone is... good. Sure, it isn't as fast as I remember, but even now, there's very little wait time on most apps, and graphic-wise, the phone actually runs apps with ease. There are some frame drops when moving around the operating system, and that's what makes this phone feel old. That, and just the operating system after Android 12, just hampers this phone's performance. I think this may be a concern for enthusiasts, but for the average person, this is definitely enough. Honestly, OnePlus should make an SE version of this phone like Apple does with their phones, but you know, the SE would actually be good. Just like the specs, you should know what to expect with the camera. But first, give me like 20 seconds to show my membership. Right now, it's not too much, just videos coming out that are not only ad-free, but also when I finish the video, so early access and ad-free, all for $2, and that's it. I'm not Netflix or Spotify, no price hikes coming, and all you get is more bonuses as I think of them. That's it. Now back to the video. Starting with the basics, we get a 48 megapixel main camera with the optical image stabilization and laser autofocusing unit, which leads to some amazing shots in the light, thanks to the pixel binning. We can shoot at 48 megapixels, but you probably shouldn't do that unless you want to edit your photos. 
There is a once controversial 8 megapixel telephoto sensor that allows for a 3x optical zoom, and it works, but sure, not the best if you wanted the main and the telephoto to replicate the same look. Still, it's optically stabilized and gives some nice reach out of a phone from 2019. Lastly, we have the 16 megapixel ultra wide sensor that focuses, something that took me years to even realize. Actually, it took me a couple years to realize that, as well as the two-tone color on the frame of the phone. Either way, this camera is not that bad, but the focusing ability is lacking, which explains why it wasn't advertised much and I didn't really notice it. Then of course, the front camera, which I love for, well, not the camera. It's a 60 megapixel sensor that is not focusable, not optically stabilized, and for video doesn't even shoot at 1080p at 60 frames per second, only 1080p at 30. That being said, here's a list of max video quality for these cameras. So yeah, the main camera can only shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, and that's fine. It's a solid camera set, but that's not what I'm here to show you. These are what I'm here to show you. Enjoy. Like I said, solid camera set that is lacking from what modern phones do now, but still better than almost anything in its price and spec range. So what do we do now? This is a 4G phone that lacks Wi-Fi 6, but also Android 13. But here's a nice thing. That's it. Now, if those three things missing bothers you, as in 5G, Wi-Fi 6, and Android 13, then this phone isn't for you. But remember, this phone is from 2019, but also the overall best phone from 2019. The storage chip not only beat Samsung to the punch for being the first UFS 3.0 chip, but it's still faster than most sub $500 new phones. So by no means is this a bad or slow phone four years after the launch, but it is lacking features that we saw one year later, like proper 5G and Wi-Fi 6, as well as phones that support Android 13 now. But hardware limitations aside, this caveat that I spoke about in the beginning of this video is modifying the phone. OnePlus devices are known for being easily rooted and adding custom operating systems onto them. Not to mention that this being a very popular phone helps the modding community continue to improve this phone, even though OnePlus is done doing that. What's the next operating system that I'm going to go to? I don't know. But it's nice knowing that the option, or I guess options, are there. OnePlus is a company that peaked in 2019. Financially, I can't speak on that, but there are only a few products since then that feel worth the price. The OnePlus Buds Pro from 2021 were amazing products after the OnePlus 7 Pro, but the OnePlus 9 series that released the same year didn't really have that same appeal. Even now, I have the OnePlus 9 Pro, and I know that it's a better phone, but I love using the 7 Pro. No, not the Google one, the OnePlus 7 Pro. And yes, there was a 5G version, but that only really supported band 41, while the OnePlus 7T Pro 5G was 41 and 71. If you need a 5G phone, I actually wouldn't recommend the 7 or 7T series, simply because the OnePlus 9 Pro is just a better option for that. Also, trying to find a 7 Pro in 12GB RAM, and in my condition nowadays, is almost impossible. And now we end my review of the OnePlus 7 Pro, my favorite phone. I'm now going to restart my phone and put on a custom ROM and see what they have to offer. Any recommendations on that is welcomed. Comments are in the comment area. That join button is $2 for no ads, even the one that I did in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching.